For more on this, we're joined uh, by Michael Morell, CBS News national security contributor and former acting CIA director. Uh, Mike, thank you very much for being here. Um, Hezbollah is a terror group uh, in the eyes of the U.S. government. Dozens of American dead on their hands, civilian and soldiers alike. They're also responsible for thousands of Israelis not being able to live in the northern part of the country. And yet, uh, one wonders what the goal of this attack was, how it accomplishes any long-term military ends for Israel. And I also want to get to the how first. How might this have happened? So three steps, Tony. The first is to get in between <clears throat> the manufacture of these devices and the delivery of those devices to Hezbollah. Multiple ways to do that. You can break into a warehouse where they're being stored for a long weekend, you know, make the changes you need to make. Or you can actually become part of that supply chain and be a, be a partial manufacturer, you can be a wholesaler. So that's, that's step one. Step two is to get inside the device, put an explosive charge, put a detonator. Step three is to put some sort of triggering device into these communications pieces um, that you can make a phone call and set them all off at once. As a covert operation, if indeed this was Israel, it is a stunning tactical victory. But what's the goal of these explosions if Israel's behind it? What do they accomplish? Tony, I think this is preparation of the battlefield for an Israeli military operation over the next few weeks to a month or so um, of going into southern Lebanon and trying to push Hezbollah back north so that tens of thousands of Israelis who have not been able to return to their homes since October 7th can go home. So I think this is, this is making it more difficult for Hezbollah to communicate, um, command and control when those military operations by Israel begin. So possibly a prelude to that military goal. I do wonder though, long term, the solution here, I imagine is not a military one, but a political one. Does this bring that any closer to reality? Tony, I don't know of any national security problem that has ever been solved with only military means. Um, you often need both military means and, most importantly, a political solution. And I think that's what's, what's required here as well. Yeah. Political solutions have one thing that have very much been lacking in that region. Michael Morell, thank you yes. very much. Welcome.